If you're listening on podcast, be sure to tune in to our YouTube channel for more content. The link is in the description. Welcome to Wild and Weird Radio, a Wild and Weird West Virginia podcast. Imagine, if you will, a place, an antique shop on a country road, much like those you find anywhere, except you're not just anywhere. You're at Deep End Antiques in Beckley, West Virginia, and the Deep End is not like any other place you have likely ever been to. Inside the Deep End, Travis Arednick will welcome you with tales of historical artifacts and amazing items he's collected from around the world. However, there's something more here in the deep end besides amazing antiques and history. You see, Travis's shop is home to many different paranormal phenomena, from objects that move on their own to people reporting being touched, to his most unusual resident, a small being which many have witnessed. You might find more than just a good deal when you visit. Travis joins us with tales from his shop and beyond. Join us for a dive into the deep end on this episode of Wild and Weird Radio. Welcome back to Wild and Weird Radio, everybody. We're glad you're joining us again this week. And uh, we've got a great show lined up for you. Uh, It's a really bizarre, bizarre stuff that we're going to be covering tonight. Um, And uh, remember, next week is the 100th episode. We have a great show lined up. And uh, you will not want to miss it. So make sure you are subscribed on YouTube and that you are subscribed on whatever podcast forum that you are listening to us on. That way you will be alerted as soon as episode 100 goes live. You don't want to miss it. So uh, how's everybody doing? Great. Had a great day. Nice and hot. Yeah, it was a little warm here. Got up, uh, I think, about 85, 80, 86, somewhere in that mm-hmm. part. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got up to about 80 in Beckley. Um, oh, wow. We're always 5 or 10 degrees cooler than you guys, but yeah. it still sucks, man. Humidity is crazy day. today. It was a hot day. I did do some paintings today, though, so oh. we have those at uh, OBC. So. I'm much further south, so it was... You I are. Think, I think it was like coming up on 90 today, so it's going to oh, be a man. nice nice hot summer here. She's giving us a preview of what's coming, boys. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. It is in store, that is for sure. <laughs> so, uh, we'll, uh, you want to do the news? Yeah, let's hit the news. We haven't did it for a while. Because we've got yeah. like, you know, all these special things. We've, we've bounced around the news and skipped it a little yes. bit. Uh, first, first up, if you're listening to this show, you are going to want to be at OBC tomorrow on uh, Saturday, April 30th. So uh, that's something you definitely don't want to miss. So if you're listening to us on Friday, April 29th, make it down to Salt Fork, Ohio. You're going to be able to come out, hang out with us. It's going to be a good time. And then we are within a month of the Wood Booger Jamboree. We are. We absolutely are. And uh, that's going to be a blast. I mean, it looks like it's really shaping up to be something cool. I'll tell you that. Oh, absolutely. So, we are really close to actually hitting our sellout limit for yes. uh, so things. many thanks to all you guys who are actually, you know, stepping up. Hey, I want to be a part of this. The ones who are donating. Yeah. Let's not forget that. The sponsors uh, who've jumped sponsors. on board. Yes. If you want to sponsor the, those packages are still available. Just hit us up and, and we'll, you know, every little, every little cent counts, especially if we're trying to get these bands in. Right. So, Oh yeah. Cause this is a party guys. Yeah. Cause the bands are actually going to be paid. Um, it's it's one of those kind of gigs. So if you are hearing this episode and you're interested in playing, get a hold of us. So um, right, let's get to that news, bro. Come yeah, 
into the news. So first thing up for me is an article that you actually shared. Which one? Um, and it was talking about how scientists uh, have proposed a new theory for why some chimps throw stones at certain oh, trees. Yes. Yes. So it it piques my interest because the whole Bigfoot phenomenon, right? You, you get wood knocks, yep. you get rock clacks, things like that when you're out mm -hmm. in the woods. And here is another species of primate that is exhibiting this kind of behavior using either uh, wood knocks or rock clacks. But in this case, they're throwing rocks at trees and they're specifically picking trees that will resonate and make mm -hmm. the best sound. Uh, That's like right. they're, they're looking at it. They know what kind of sound this tree is going to make when they throw a rock at it. So that's why they select it. And uh, it's, it's really cool. It's, it's, it's neat seeing that kind of behavior. It's very cool. And it, as I said in, in the statement, that it really goes back to uh, early humans uh, in the way that we used percussion as a way to actually communicate, you know? I mean, you know as well as I do, uh, musical instruments, they're, they're made. Wooden musical instruments are made of certain wood. So, yeah. you know, a certain wood vibrates, it resonates differently. There's that whole frequency thing again. So, I mean, yep. you know. Yeah, this is really, to me, it was really cool news. This makes me think of, somebody sent me a video recently of uh, chimpanzees taking uh, certain stones and placing them around trees in a ritualistic manner. Yes. and um, Or they'll put them inside trees and in the holes inside of trees. Mm -hmm. And what they sent that to me for is, is uh, I had a video that came out called Bluff Charged by a Bigfoot at Night. And in that video, we find this really old tree that kind of stands out in the middle of the forest. And there are um, there are stones all around it. There's uh, crystals all around it. It's a uh, I'm I'm losing my mind here. It is um, the white one that everybody has. Quartz, quartzite. Quartz. Quartz. Well, it's quartzite because it's not clear, quartzite. so it's the mm -hmm. it's the white, so it's quartzite. Yeah. There you go. Sorry, I'm I'm with it today. I promise. It's okay. <laughs> but um, so there's these large chunks of quartzite that are placed on the roots around this tree in our video. And so somebody sent me this video of these chimps um, just putting these rocks around these trees in kind of the same manner. So I thought that was kind wow. of cool. In North Georgia, we're finding this. Um, and then we went out there during the day this past week and went back to that tree. And a lot of those rocks, specifically the ones that we touched and picked up last time we were there, had been taken from the tree and thrown into a pile. So huh. we took some of the rocks and put them back around the tree. So when we go back again, we're going to check it out and see if anything kind of moves it around. But yeah, that just kind of made me think about that, 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 that chimps are involved mm -hmm. in ritualistic behavior when it yeah. comes to trees. Yeah. i really did see it as possible, you know, possibility of ritualistic behavior. I've even asked that about, you know, possibility of Bigfoot, you know, I mean, we do hear some of this stuff, uh, you know, the whole tree structure things. I know a lot of them we've pretty much debunked, but yeah, man, there's some weird stuff out there. Yeah, uh, the the thing with the wood knocks and and tree structures is uh, they're still they're really subjective because no one yeah. has ever actually witnessed that kind of behavior. It's been observed in encounters where you're out in the woods, but nobody's ever seen the creature actually perform the act we don't know if it's some kind of a clap if it is a mouth noise or if they're smacking the tree if they're throwing a rock at the tree when nobody really knows but this makes more sense to me than the bigfoot walking around like we do with a stick on our back and swinging Locking it at trees. a specific tree Beating the squatch out of it. Yeah. Yeah. We we always joke that it's it's funny that people go out and when they go do Sasquatch research that they take like a bat or something with them. And it's like, okay, you brought wood to the woods. All right. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I can totally uh, you know, I totally understand it though. I thought it was really a cool um a, a cool article. It was a really cool It article. really was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh all right. Well, another thing in the news is here recently we have had a slew of reports and even Fox News managed to botch this surprise. Mm -hmm. And um, it was of the uh, the the satellite array that Elon Musk sent into the sky for uh, for the Internet service. And we're seeing this thing arc across the sky and the folks on the news channels were saying, oh, it just kind of looks like something burning up on reentry. No, like this is something you can actually 
observe on a map where it's going to be, when it's going to be, just like the ISS. Yeah. How how are you guys still screwing that up? Well, I mean, they're not the only ones. Look at all the groups that shared it. And, hey, what is this? This strange thing. I mean, all you yeah. had to do is open up, you know, the, the tracker and it told you, you know. And um, it to, to some of their credit, like. It looks intimidating. It is very intimidating. And depending on what angle you're observing this thing from, uh, the farthest out satellites on either end almost look as if they're rounding out mm -hmm. an object. Mm -hmm. And so it looks like this classic sci-fi disc moving across the sky where you've got the port lights around the edges mm -hmm. and then the lights on the end are smaller than the ones through the middle and it causes this optical illusion of having a rounded shape. Yep. And, and that's just not the case. They're all in a straight line. It just has to do with our angle of observation. Yep, absolutely. Um, I remember the first time we had, we had actually got to see it after it moved out to its further yeah. orbit because it is moved out farther now, and that was very different. We knew what we were looking at, but it was still like it wow. didn't change the way it felt. Like that yeah. was the weird part. You yeah. still had this feeling of mm -hmm. like it wasn't quite the uncanny valley, but it also was because yeah. uh, you knew what it was, but it was just bizarre seeing that in the sky. Yep, it was definitely something you know, as far as our technology goes, right? I mean, that's just amazing. It might be kind of how our my great-grandparents felt whenever, like, I first broke out an iPhone. Could be, could be, could be. And speaking of, the, you know, the technology, uh, we had a nice report uh, that verified what we already knew. I don't know why this stuff makes news, but evidence of agriculture on exoplanets should be visible to the James Webb Telescope. Shocking. Surprise. Uh, we've been told this by countless people multiple months and months and possibly a year or more before this thing even launched that that was its mission. But to those who do not know, yes, yes, that is its purpose. It is to seek out strange new life and new civilizations, et cetera, et cetera. Is the James and, Webb up and running already? Uh, they have, I believe, done the uh, initial calibration of it. Yeah. Okay. From what I understand. Um, has it actually done anything yet? Mm. And I doubt that we will know, honestly, uh, for another two years, probably, if it does actually detect, because they really did say in the beginning that, what was it, within the first few months, it would easily be able to find uh, signs of techno signatures, yeah. techno signatures, yeah. So, uh, you know, the, the new thing yeah, for everybody, just to show you what's coming, uh, Basically, this thing is going to detect, or I'm sorry, is supposed to detect uh, signs of uh, agriculture on distant planets. Okay. So as I've already said, you know, we get these people who are always crying about, oh, the earth needs to shut up. You know, we need to stop broadcasting our signals. And we did done. We, you know, they have found us ages ago. If we can find planets, you know, light years away that are developing agriculture, I'm pretty sure we, you know, the secret's out of the bag. Yeah. So uh, I think the last bit of news before we can dive into the episode here is uh, something about the group page. Um, anybody who follows Wild and Weird, the talk page, uh, it's our big group community page where everybody's welcome to come and share their ideas, all that stuff. Um, we are going to have to further restrict our, I guess, operations because mm -hmm. Facebook is now using its lovely array of bots to go through and flag false stories now we were using the page as a repository as well um for some known hoaxes and there were a couple posts that had strings of shares throughout uh the last two weeks documenting that one famous hoax that's been traveling around since 2014 of the bigfoot walking along on a lake that basically is pick your state and lake and yeah. say this is where the Bigfoot's at and it's been confirmed, the sheriff and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, Y'all know which one I'm talking about. I think well, that got sent to me by everybody yeah. that knows me. I was at yeah. work and I had people coming up to me, oh my God, did you see it? Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, please, no. Yeah. Right. And uh, so those Facebook is further cracking down on those kind of posts um, because they do go viral. And because uh, because people don't ever look into them, they just share them. They don't including you know, the news, Joe. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Including the news and any of these stories that are flagged by the Facebook fact checkers are starting to cause issues on the group. And we were given a warning saying that further issues, because there were multiple people who were sharing this exact hoax to our page. Um, every one of those was a strike against us. And uh, basically any further issues or fake news, our page will be moved down farther into the feed, hiding it from view. So Not that to, you see it now anyway. I mean. so, so to keep that clean, we are going to have to further review every post that comes through and just gatekeep the stuff that we already know is fake. But if you do want to catch all of the cataloged information that we are still archiving, so that way you know what is a hoax and what might be legitimate, head on over to wildandweirdwv.com, click on the forum link, and sign up. Join the forum today. Get away from the tyrannical bots that are censoring all of social media. Yeah, because Jess warned you that this was going to happen. She did. I, I mean, she did. And Nobody I mean, listens. Nobody no listens. One. I'm going to sit. Yeah. Um, I'm going to sit on my mountain of beans and rice and yeah. laugh at all of you people. Yeah, she will too. <laughs> she will. Well, that's like this morning. Um, like, what five a.m., six a.m. I send Joe a picture of a, a oh, hyena. Perfect. Yeah. yeah, there was a, a oh the high, so, yes yes. So this lady had made a post um, from Elkins, West Virginia, of a guy posing with a hyena that is obviously a hyena, and, and it's I real. Send it, it is a hundred percent real. Yeah, I sent it to Joe, and I'm like, hey, somebody's claiming this was killed in Elkins, and before I could even say it's obviously a hyena, he sent me a screenshot from like two years ago, and he said, yeah, I've been waiting for this to go around, but I mean, she'd even put like. Joe Schmo said that he shot this yeah. last night on this mountain in Elkins, and it has 680 some shares as of this morning. Dude, yeah. Um, so yeah, and that's, that's the, it's probably the over hoax. A thousand, one. You know, the the real one was shared on a. Um, it, it was it was actually shot on a safari, and I knew from the get go that this this picture <coughs> was going to be used because it did set a record for for size on a brown hyena. It was absolutely oh, it was monstrous. It's big. Yeah. And they, then the other thing that kind of threw a red flag is the brown hyena is referred to as the werewolf of Africa. And because it doesn't have the hair around its face mm -hmm. and head, so it looks kind of like fleshy sometimes. So they just, it looks like a man goes into their shape shifting lore. And so the werewolf of Africa. So I knew. So I instantly started screenshotting the original footage, all the stuff of the guy that actually took it down, the real. The real stuff, uh, all the original hashtags, all the uh, original links to the safari guides that actually took him out on this hunt. And uh, just because I, I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. And sure enough, it had to be right in our backyard where it started turning around, huh? Yeah, all, right. Right. all this dissemination of these fake stories, what are they trying to hide? What are they trying to muddy the waters with? Yeah. Like, distributing all of these fake stories and they're going viral right now. I mean, you, you know, we've talked about the, the, the lie sandwich is that you muddy the water so much with these stories that are just absolutely false. And so that anytime something comes up, which may raise a red flag, everybody's just going to instantly dismiss it. So it doesn't really help uh, furthering what we're trying to do here. Um, so I'm just curious, like, is something going on? We got something else going on that, a lot of these kind of cryptid type stories are being disseminated right now as a, uh, a disinformation campaign. Hey, uh, the, you know. the weirdest part about this post though, because I went and looked at the profile of the person that had originally posted it as it being from Elkins. So, you know, a lady posted it and she put a name on there that seemed like it, it was even a regional name, you know, like Schmidt and Ball and names like that are really common to West yeah. Virginia. Yeah. So she puts a regional name, uh, this guy, killed this in Elkin. So it, it seems like she knows the guy. She's seen it in person. So I go and look at her profile and the weirdest part is she hadn't posted anything else that was like off the wall, oddball. Like there was no anything that would make you think that she would ever post something that would be absolute BS. Um, so it was really weird to me that all of a sudden out of the blue, somebody that's like sharing you know, the I love my mother posts and, and pictures yeah. from Sunday brunch. And, and then all of a sudden she comes up with something that's an obvious lie. 
like and it's just sandwiched between two bible verses and like a picture of puppies it just i, I don't know man it it just strikes me as super weird that that would be the person that does this you think it'd be like a new account or somebody that's you know everything they share is like i believe posters and right no, just, you're right it's not the and, person that you would think to, would uh, she seems it, believable what you just said, um, new accounts with the I believe posters and all that stuff. There's actually, and I don't know what it is. I mean, it might be, it might be because the Bigfoot community is kind of gullible at times. So they are taking advantage of these people, and they're actually foreign accounts. All of the pictures on their Facebook are Bigfoot related pictures, and even their profile picture is of. Uh, you know, Bigfoot, and then their name is the most American name ever. But if you scroll back through their history, you find like a Scrabble board that was spilled on the floor, and they just put the letters together to make a name. And that was the original name on the profile. And then they changed it to Jimmy John or right. Bigfoot Hunter. And they they share. They're the ones that are really pushing a lot of these big hoaxes. And um, the ones that the one that for for example we were speaking about earlier. You know, some of those accounts are going to the Sasquatch Chronicles sites, the Bigfoot Believers sites, Finding Bigfoot Fans, Expedition Bigfoot Fans, and they are just unloading all of these bogus pictures and just getting clicks. And what's weird is, like, you don't get paid for a post like. Now, if it's a no. video and your content like that, then, yeah, Facebook will pay you, but you don't get paid for likes. It's odd. I don't know what exactly the angle is or if they're trying to scam people. But, yeah, I mean, it, it would be so easy for you to make a profile like that and then just come out of nowhere and message yeah. one person that looks like they're into it. They got a picture of a Corvette on their page, whatever. You think they got a little bit of money and go, hey, man, I have five original Bigfoot pictures that you will never see anywhere else. Do you want to be the guy to break the story for a thousand bucks? Yeah. You know, you got to be really yeah. careful, man. You do. Where I do and so much with uh, military antiques every single day i run one of the larger military collectibles pages on facebook and every single day i have somebody come to me and they say hey i had a new account you know they messaged me and they had this one particular knife that sells for like ten thousand dollars and they offered it to me for four because they didn't know what they had and then i just went ahead and, and wired them the money and now i haven't got the knife and i'm like you should not this is your fault you deserve to lose that you know you should have done this <laughs> there was wait, a wait, are you saying people on the internet are not truthful? He just uh, I'm a that. French model. What? Yeah. Yeah, you remember yeah, the French model that. commercial? <laughs> well, folks, that is going to be our news for today because we have got to uh, get to the, the real story, and which yeah. includes this guy right here um, who, who may as well be another host as far as we're concerned at this point. Um, he's uh, He's got some wild and weird stories to tell. So... Uh, so it's, it's a high uh, for my first podcast. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us, man. So uh, tell us a little bit about you and uh, about the shop. Yeah, so uh, I'm Travis Rednick, and it is pronounced uh, Red Nick. Um, so, of course, Redneck's been my name my entire life. But uh, no, I'm in the Deep in Antiques here in Beckley, West Virginia. Um, it's a really odd mid sized antique store, not a mall. Um, we just have weird stuff, you know. It's uh, it's built on a swimming pool from a motel that opened in the 1940s. Um, it became the Down and Out Inn for about 35, 40 years. There was a bar right next to it. So if you wanted to, you know, pick up a prostitute or drugs or anything that you could think of that was negatively impactful on your community in Beckley, you came to where my shop is now. Um, you know, the history of the store is pretty wild itself. Um, we are directly on top of the swimming pool, which is how I got the name for the shop. Um, some of the stories, you know, right behind my store, there was a shootout in one of the motel rooms with police in the 70s with some bank robbers. Uh, there was a cop killed in our parking lot in the 80s. There's been, I think that we've been able to figure out, like, that we know of just from the local community, probably around 500 overdoses um, that happened in motel rooms in the vicinity of the store. Uh, and then to make things weirder, we have an intersection of one of the deadliest coal mines in America directly underneath us, uh, the Eccles Number 9 mine. We have two rivers that intersect underneath us, and we are on the corner of an intersection. So if you believe in crossroads stuff, we are a triple whammy. Um, yeah. Don't forget the Civil War stuff. 
yeah, there was a civil war ambush. I, I mean, yeah. you can, you know, I could sit here all night and talk about the satanic rituals where they sacrificed virgins on the hill above the store uh, at the country club. You know, that was a rumor that went around in Beckley for like 50 years. People still talk about it. Um, there were bodies dumped where the motel is now in the 1930s that they found. Uh, it's just, it's a weird spot. The whole history of that little area right there, it runs along the Canal Gals Turnpike, which was during the Civil War, the main road from Canal County, Virginia at the time to Gals County, Virginia, uh, which was one of the really important roads for Union soldiers moving north um, or moving south, I'm sorry. So, you know, it's hard to tell what else happened there. I mean, there's been an ungodly amount of car wrecks right in front of the store. Uh, well, 200 yards to the left, or whatever. Um, and then there's all the stuff that I bring in. So I specialize in uh, vintage military equipment. Um, I actually was a biological hazmat guy for a while. So I did uh, body cleanup. And for some reason, people have this propensity to just hand me guns that their family members have committed suicide with um so i have a large collection of those but you know just weird stuff i mean you guys have seen some of the the stuff in the store it's uh it's like that twilight yeah, it's, zone it's episode wild. needful things where it's like i just walk yeah. up and hand you a thing and i'm like this is what you were looking for this and actually happens yeah yeah ron got cut Multiple I, times giving him some uh some dandelion salve that i made and i was like here you need this and then he got real. cut later <laughs> not even kidding when we went up there he's like oh here random this is completely random dandelion salve? i mean what okay sure i'll take that because you never know and i'll be darned if i didn't we were out on a trail and i stepped over a rock and cut my knee and i was like hey wait i have that stuff that travis gave me put it on it was like didn't feel a thing it's like, you've got to be kidding me. Like, just the craziest thing. And that just added more to the weird legend of the place. Yeah, that place has a mind of its own, dude. It's amazing. It really does. Uh, we got to spend a few hours there. Uh, I know Ron went back. Um, and But that night when we were there, there was just so much wild, crazy stuff that was going on. Stuff moving by itself. Um then, then the, the Obnik. <laughs> so tell, tell, uh, <laughs> tell the people, tell the people about the Obnik. Yeah, we, yeah. we tried to teased about this for a while. And, you know, so from, from the guy who knows, here's the story, not from us. Yeah, this is the second interview that I've ever done on this. Um, the first one was with SRI, a, a paranormal investigation crew out of uh, Huntington. Um, so I'm Slavic, you know, we're, uh, we're Kosick, if you've ever heard the Kosicks, um, Don Kosick from the lower to Napier River Valley, um, kind of between Ukraine and Russia, that weird little battleground that's been going for, what, 1200 years, I mean, Genghis Khan took it over at one point, um, we were brought over in the early 1900s to work in the coal mines after, uh, the Bolshevik Revolution, um, so that, particular region has a lot of mythology and, and folklore that people don't know anything about. Um, you'll never hear anything about it. There's not books about it. It's not like the, the Celtic and the Nordic stuff, that it's it's everywhere, right? Um, all of our symbols have been adopted by weird hate groups through the years for some reason. So anything that would have been considered like a regional symbol for us, um, you know, the, the Nordic people dealt with it a lot too. Um, the swastika was one of our symbols before you know who took it. So it's it's just a weird area, man. Um, you know, and one of the cool things about it is um, we're the middle between the Russian people and the Slavic people. So a lot of people mix those two up. Uh, Russian is its own thing. So, you know, Slavic is going to be more you know, Poland and Slovakia and Ukrainian. Um, and then you've got the Russians on the other side, which is its own entity. So we're kind of the mix of those two. Uh, the Kosicks traveled sporadically. You know, they were uh, very similar to the, the Romani people. Um, 
but a lot of the folklore was lost to you know through the years we uh we were a big focus for christians coming from um turkey in that area constantinople so anything that they could get a hold of they destroyed um anything that they couldn't get a hold of has kind of been spoken word there's extremely few references unless you can read cyrillic uh, which i do but you know and even then it's it's kind of like a, a neo scene of speculation on whether or not that's actually how it would have been done um a few of the things that have survived are you know kikomoras which are like a water spirit um bonix the the bathhouse spirits domovoi which are house spirits uh, similar to like the english brownies if you've heard of brownies um and then there's one in particular that lives in barns uh it if you treat it well will guard your cattle it'll make sure that everything's taken care of if if you're sick your animals just magically won't die um if you make it mad it will burn down your barn and kill you so definitely definitely two sides there two different things um so we have a, a long history with that i won't get too far into it but uh we have one in the store um i i have a barn it's the quietest barn in the world there's nothing that ever goes on in there so since the store opened uh, i've had at least 40 eyewitness accounts uh two of those are here right now um you know i'm probably up to close to 50 now i haven't actually kept count because i don't care that much but you know we uh we have people that see a, a little black cat running around in the store uh, particularly in the back room um, i put out salt once a week uh, i'll make bellini and bring it down and sometimes if i have pierogies or something i'll bring them down too and, and just leave it out um it's interesting though because it's it's not just a like a paranormal entity it's not that kind of thing it's like people have actually touched it it's touched them it's you know uh, Teresa Cheshire from uh, SRI she will adamantly defend it like to the bitter end that she had it rub up against her shoulder um, while she was sitting on the couch in the back room one night but I think the first time that I really told anybody about it in the store because it, it's not a big deal for me um it's been an ongoing thing for literally forever as long as i can remember this is something that's been around so it's not like it's just kind of part of it it's, it's like a family pet you know um yeah sri came in and they heard something run across in the top of the building and brian was like oh yeah you have a raccoon in here or something i said no it's the obvious it just goes upstairs sometimes and then it comes back down he's like the what and then i explained to him what it was um and then that night they you know had the thrill of their life they everybody in that group saw it um they will all defend it to the bitter end that that's the most paranormal thing that they've ever seen um it's interesting you know i mean for me it's kind of normal it's it's interesting to me that so many people have taken an interest in it uh yeah man that's just it's it's a little black cat that stands on its back legs like a meerkat and sometimes it barks and sometimes it squeaks if it's happy and uh, if it squeaks it means you're probably in good standing and if it barks you're probably not um it's thrown stuff at people uh it was brian that it threw a pumpkin at like a a plastic pumpkin so you know like brian made it really mad um he this, that there. doesn't shock me because we got to see how he goes in to do paranormal investigation <laughs> and like I, i'm not it was one of those things where you're like i don't want to stand here yeah yeah we me and ron were both like mm, <laughs> this is mm, like because i i've been on um i've been on a trip with ron and i know how stuff works in my own home and i'm like mm, no <laughs> i'm gonna go over well, here is Brian Seamus's dad? Yeah. Okay. I love Seamus. I do too. Seamus is the coolest kid ever. That's yeah. like my favorite person in the world. Every He's a he good kid. Brother, I think I got a picture of Jesse with him uh, at Wild and Weird Con last year. Yeah. We but, became uh, best friends. <laughs> it's easy with that kid. He's awesome. But um, Brian went back there and he started yelling at it. 
And I walk back there and I'm like, you need to go outside and sit down and, and calm down. You're not doing this here. Like, I don't, I'll live here. You know, I'm here every day of the week. I'm not going to have this. And uh, so he does. And then he comes back and he's just polite. But that night that they left, um, he had a blowout on a set of new tires on the interstate. Uh, and then I, I think that it held a little bit of animosity against him. Um, they came back again and he got his food stolen. Uh, he brought some snacks and some drinks and stuff and it just disappeared. And then all of a sudden, halfway through the night while we were down in the storage shed, I, I wasn't even in the building whenever he, he found it. Uh, it was only his crew. So we're down in storage and we come back up and it's just sitting on top of the toolbox, like where they were sitting. So that was neat. Um, yeah, man. I, I don't know what's the. Well, you're you're dealing like you were saying. It's not your. It's not what we would classify as a paranormal entity either, because uh, like you said, this thing eats. Yeah, it has a physical presence. And it it blocks light. Um, I mean, I saw it. Ron has seen it. It's weird. I'll give you that. I don't think it's paranormal, but like I've Fast. never, I've never seen something, uh, go from a physical form like it to just nothing. Like yeah, I've yeah. seen some weird stuff. Like I've seen some weird supernatural stuff before, but this was like clearly a solid entity, and then wasn't. Yeah, and I mean, even in uh, eastern Russia, um, once you get up around Siberia in that area, they have a lot of deaths every year that are attributed to offense, and the police don't even investigate them. This is did, like a... Do they put a, that on the death certificates? Death I, by I, object? I think they should put natural causes, I would hope. <laughs> okay. um, but it's always, it's always men, and it's guys that beat their wives or they're drunks and thieves and they you know i mean it's hard to find information on that's the weird thing if you talk to people from eastern russia they'll tell you like openly like it's a normal thing it's never really a published thing it's just kind of like something that happens um but they'll have like cat footprints in the snow leading up to a body that's had its throat slit on the side and bled out in the snow and then no more footprints and there's nobody around it. And the only other way that I think you could pull this off is if you were like an expert with a bow and you could somehow magically just graze a broadhead against somebody's neck. Um, it's, it's pretty crazy, man. Uh, it's been a thing for over a thousand years. So it's insane. But yeah. So the, Avnik is the great equalizer. Basically. He's, yeah. He's... It, it likes women more than men. Uh, they're all male. That's, one interesting fact they obviously don't breed um you know they just get around they just forever. are yeah they just exist and they'll you know whenever you move uh, there's a specific protocol for you to call the obnick out of your barn and invite it in your new barn oh wow um, if you don't then that particular creature will hold animosity against you and your family for the rest of eternity um same thing kind of with doma boy uh, you know, the house spirits. And it's interesting, too, because a lot of the the paranormal investigations that I've seen that are in homes, specifically, um, they're extremely reminiscent of just about any report of a, a house. I don't want to call it a spirit, but a house being like a dome of oil or brownie. Mm -hmm. um, every culture has one of those. The Native Americans had it. You know, yep. the, uh, the Icelandic people still to this day have a specific budget a governmental budget for putting little doors on hillsides once you get out of the united states pretty much everybody is like a believer in these types of things even if it's not that one specifically they have their own version um the japanese were huge on it, you know and whenever you move houses you have to invite your dumb boy out but you know i watch these paranormal investigations and it's like you know you hear something run across the floor okay comparable right yeah and then it's you know something gets knocked off the shelf okay also yeah so it's 
you know, from somebody that knows a little bit more about that specific region of um, folklore and mythology, especially from our part of the world, it's uh, more interesting and less interesting at the same time because it's like stuff that's very normal for us. Um, you know, in that particular culture, there's entire festivals devoted to making these things happy. There's specific offerings you give weekly. Um, you know, there's, I have a, a really good friend that's uh, in Southern Ukraine and he actually is out of town quite a bit. Um, right now he's actually fighting, but he pays a guy whenever he's out of town to come and take care of his barn in his house and he doesn't have pets. He has to make sure that that's done because that's wow. not a relationship that he wants to, you know, mess with. So once you get out of America, man, it's a different ballgame as far as this stuff goes. Yeah, there there was a lot of um, puritanical purifying yeah. that went on. It's a good word for it. Um, that that went on and it, it sanitized a lot of cultures, and um, it. It really kind of it held on here stronger than it did anywhere else in the world, because so many other cultures still hold fast to their their lore. Like to them, it's not folklore; it is it is their history. It is it's reality, the, the reality of what they yeah. deal with. But here, it's it's folklore. It's yeah, crazy. And, you know, North America in and of itself is a giant island of culture. Um, once, you know, we came over or just non-natives came here, everybody was one religion. And if natives wouldn't convert, they were the enemy. And that was just kind of the, the time. That's what you did at that time. So there was a lot of native culture that was completely rejected. Um, it's different whenever you get into Europe and Asia and Africa because you have so many subcultures. It wasn't everybody started on this side and moved that way. It was, you know, thousands of years of development where you, you stack, you know, this region has this culture, this region has this culture, and the Christians come through and, and destroy it, or the Muslims come through and destroy that culture. And then you have a neighboring village, you know, so many miles away and they didn't go down there and then those people come back up and they start to interbreed with the people from the first one that did get hit so it this stuff kind of regenerated in those areas um here it never really existed to begin with because if you weren't you know with the religion of the time you were the enemy of the state so you know i mean if i walk out and half a broom three times above my door in 1780 America I'm going to be killed. They're going to dunk you in a big tank of water to see if you yeah. float. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I, I will weigh more than a duck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Or less exactly. than a duck. I don't know. You get killed for both of them. It you get killed for both. It if, you survive, if you survive the waterboarding <laughs> they just take you and hang you at that point. Yeah. Or burn you. One of the two. But yeah, I mean, regional cultures outside of North America are a completely different ballgame. Um, if you, you know, if anybody listening to this has been to Eastern Europe, um, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You we actually houses. have listeners over there. So you're right. We do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it's This is crazy, but 3% of our current listening base is, is from Eastern Europe. Yeah, so, I mean, they'll understand exactly what i'm talking about um it that's just how life is it's you know you're raised with that knowledge that there is more than just this and like i said before the show started you know there's crazy things that we think are crazy especially in north america but guys you're on a giant spinning rock in the middle of space that is the perfect distance away and near to the sun in an infinite range and you have technology and we've survived this long like there are crazier things than the things that you don't know the things that you do know are pretty whack true very true well i, I gotta say you know i've 
I have investigated a few uh, so-called haunted places before, Travis. I've been in a few of these places, and um, I've experienced some things. I've seen some things. You know, uh, as I always say, I've seen some weird stuff, right? But um, I have never, ever been standing beside a cabinet um, and watched it open and went to close it and find out that it didn't just open because of gravity. There's really strong magnets on it. Uh, you actually have to 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 put your finger in that that little little spot there that you've got on this thing and, and open it that way. I only yeah. figured that out, by the way, the second time I went up there because I'm like, wait a minute. If I do this, it opens right up. Freaked me out even more because that's exactly what we witnessed that uh, that night, you know. And uh, I I don't know, man. Uh, to have it happen once, which is what you usually have. This is what's weird about your place. Most places that you're in, you get you may get one thing, really crazy thing that happens one night, you know, and you might get that recorded, and that's awesome. Or you might get a cool EVP. That place, there were weird sounds in hallways. There were, you know, uh, effects with, with things opening and closing. There was multiple the cabinets that were just it, opening on their own. This is the craziest thing I have ever seen. With yeah, I mean, stuff, I, stuff I falling over. I can wave my hand in the door, like at the doors. Yeah. I can go like that. It maybe one out of ten times the door just opens with my hand across the room. Like, so you're a Jedi, okay? But um, <laughs> I can, but I can bring people in and show them. That's the interesting thing about the shop. Well, Do you yeah. want to see the object? That's what you, you did. Come to my store. You don't have to buy anything. I will stand you in front of a mirror. I will cut the light off in the back room. I will say, usually you'll pop up right there. Just stand still for a few minutes. Watch that area. And he's going to pop up on the couch. And you'll see little white teeth and little green eyes. And something that looks like a mirror cat that just kind of stands there. And it's it's not a, okay, well, maybe you'll see it. Maybe this time it'll show. You know, it's kind of on a schedule. Like, no. I'm like, hey, do you want to see it? Yeah. Come and look at it. Yeah, it and that's literally what happens. And you won't stand there for more than maybe ten minutes. Uh, that's that's about it. We were standing around talking uh, for probably half an hour, and then then Travis just was like, "So, do you guys want to see it?" And we're like, "See what?" Because <laughs> that's how he presented it. Yeah. We were not. Ron and I were just enamored with all the the menagerie. Of, of stuff so it's we a magical were, place it really is because we were disassociated from all the paranormal groups that were there we didn't we mean were, to be guys we're we're like geeks when it comes to antiques yeah we were geeking out over the history that was right in front of us and some of the stuff we were seeing like oh my gosh can you dude look at this <laughs> yeah, and we're like we're like the two guys from pickers you know yeah pretty much it's like... <laughs> and um and then all of a sudden he's like so do you guys want to see it and we're like <laughs> see see it <laughs> rewind <laughs> what are we looking at here and uh because because prior to that we were going around the store and travis was just like so do you need and he'd pull this thing out and we we're like and then like what about this i got one of these and you're just like yeah just, so when he asked hole. you do you want to see it did you did you get like nervous like there's like an eyes wide shut situation about to happen in this antique store you know, even if that would have been the case, I was genuinely intrigued by everything else that had already occurred. That I was kind of like, I think I do want to see it. I don't know what it is, but I think yeah. I want to see it. It was almost Just like ready for the, it, huh? the 1960s in a in a hippie party, man. It was like anything goes, you know. It was like <laughs> groovy. No, so but, I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I met you guys at um, the expo. I was like, okay, these guys are pretty cool, and then. Uh, you know, your art was awesome. The stuff that you make is incredible. Oh, well, thank you. Um, I, had, I'm, I had never listened to the podcast up to that point. I don't didn't know bad. you no guys one does. were. <laughs> but, no, but I, I mean, I had honestly just, I don't travel in the right circles. I don't look up the right keywords. I had never heard of you guys. I'd never heard either of your names before. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's just, us. you know. And then I was like, okay, these guys are pretty cool. When I listened to you guys uh, do your talks at the convention, and I was like, okay. Yeah, I'll try to get them in the store. And I felt like if I was like, hey, do you guys want to see my cat? You'd have been like, uh, Get away, weirdo. <laughs> we have to go to the hotel. We, we had a long day. 
you know, yeah, exactly, Jesse. That's so I was like, okay, well, they probably like antique stores. So if they want to come down and check out the store, I'm going to be open anyway. And then whenever they get in, I'll be like, hey, do you guys want to see a real cricket? <laughs> yeah, right. I yeah, like that works. you had to really consider how you're going to approach this so you don't sound like you're going to throw them in the back of a van and human traffic them somewhere. <laughs> well, we thought about that when we went out to the back shed. Yeah, the storage, yeah. Storage room. So you know, because that, that that spot was weird. That's that weird. That spot scares people to death. I had a guy. Um, I won't say his name because I don't know if he's publicly told the story, but you guys know who it is. Yeah. Um, he basically collapsed in there. Um, so like I said, it's an evil place. Yeah. It's just it's a. It's bad got place. some weird it, stuff going on. Like we had. Uh, I, don't, I don't think we really got into it. We didn't talk about the back um, at all, really, except yeah, for the so, shadow. But well, so, yeah, um, more in depth. Just, we were experiencing some some weird phenomena that night, and this was this is mind you. Post obnick, like yeah, the weird meter had already been sent through the roof, and we're out walking around. Did you see that? Uh, yeah, it's your little bug thing. I know it's a little critter. I got I got like my own little. I think a Miller moth here, but anyway, that's um, what it is. I think it's what it is. It's anyway. We're uh, we're hanging out, and we they're doing an investigation out in the storage unit. And Travis like, yeah, you want to go out to the storage unit? You're like, yeah, sure, why not? So we go out there and we're looking around. He's telling us all the stuff that was going on out there, and um, we started walking over initially over to this one part of the storage unit section. Is uh, these were old hotel rooms, is what they were or motel rooms and there's a section of it's been destroyed and it's been ripped out. Uh, this might've been where the office was. I'm not sure. Travis would know. Uh, but, no, the West Virginia state code will not allow power lines to run over an existing structure. So uh, they had to tear that down to put the power lines in for muster. Gotcha. Wow. Okay. So, so uh, that place, that part, middle section was leveled. We start walking over there and immediately, you know, Travis, jumps back a little bit because he's he's telling us about some of the stuff they've experienced he showed us pictures of these weird face it's actually a face and uh um, yeah i have it with its mouth open and its mouth closed yeah it's it's real bizarre and then um we see a deer so he kind of gets startled i'm like i have really really decent nice night vision like just natural i can see in the dark pretty well and this place wasn't super well lit so i was i was all right i can i saw the deer yeah. and, I just put my hand on his back and say, hey, it's it's good. We're deer. It's deer. <laughs> um, but was it? But, but was it? Yeah, it, not deer. That's but, actually uh, a question, though. But, that's but not then, a joke. I mean, that's like a concern. Yeah, at, it's, at your place, I would say that's a concern. Anywhere else, yeah. I'd be like, no. But now, at your place, dude, I, this, I don't even know. This specific time, there were actually two does, and they went and did their thing. Um, then we saw a third doe up on the hill. We could see their eyes doing the thing. Anyway back Maybe. out we we he tells us a little story about some of the stuff that gone on in the ditch line back there behind it which you guys had already heard uh previously then we go over to where the uh, the paranormal investigators are doing their stuff and we're just kind of hanging out that's when we saw like how they're like talking to this stuff and we're like oh. well that's when what's her name got her we got her butt yeah. pinched right she got pinched yeah she got fondled by something like what oh and, yeah yeah for real yeah so then uh we we walk we walk out of there because again like Ron was saying like I'm not standing here. <laughs> we, yeah, it was it was weird. It was weird, and we we walked out. And when we walked out, Travis pointed out across the the uh, yeah, parking. You see that? You see that? And at the same time, we had both seen this already because yeah. I'm I'm looking at it, and he's like, "Do you see that?" I'm like, "Is he messing with me?" No, it's really moving. Like the, the door handle's moving. I'm like, "Holy crap, it is!" And then the shadows started. The shadows changing. were actually. Moving. They it shouldn't was, move. There was no was, reason for um, the shadows to move. You know how when it's really hot out and you're coming up on a, a horizon and you can see the way the heat is interacting with the black top of a road, the way it's things like a get thermal little, illusion, sort of. Like that thermal illusion, yeah. But Barrage. It, yeah. it was cold as all get out. It was snowing that day. Snowing. This is not a heat mirage. The electricity is not on in that part of the structure. And then we're seeing this the shadow was doing the heat mirage thing which i've never seen before that was weird and yeah i'm the guy that runs around in the forest 
at dark sometimes. So I'm not really too worried about things. And I start walking towards it because I'm like, I want to get closer. I want a better view. I want to see if this keeps happening or if it's some kind of a distance phenomena. It wasn't a distance phenomena. I, as I kept approaching, this activity still kept happening. And um, then I turned my head and, and it was just at an angle. Uh, it, it was somewhere between like 38 and 42 degrees orientation from my face. So it wasn't in my periphery. It was, it was in my field of view. Mm -hmm. And as I turned, all of a sudden I'd see this like little white dot that would just start to grow and it expanded. And like, this is tall. Like it, it went to the point where it was, uh, you, you know how you see lights sometimes if you have, um, a, you've seen pictures, I'm sure of people who have, uh, uh, what lights look like if you have astigmatism, how the lights are stretched out and blurry. It looked like that, but this was pure white. And it only showed up at that angle. The more when I turned to look back at it, it went away. And then I tested it again and I turned and I'm like, is something happening to me? <laughs> uh, because this is really weird. I'm seeing this thing and it's right in the orientation where we were watching the the weird stuff going with the building. And then all of a sudden it quit. And that's Ron and Travis caught up with me. I told them what I saw. And I was like, that was really weird. Then we walk up around out back and we got up behind the structures where this, um, fa the picture of this face was taken. And we're looking around and it gets weird again. The, the vibe changed. And totally. One important thing to me to make known um, I coyote hunt alone at night in bear country I camp alone in the cranberry back country 12 14 miles deep with no cell phone signal no anything I am not afraid of the dark I am not afraid of the woods I play with venomous snakes and you know I like to shoot things that can kill me um there is not anything in this world in the woods that actually scares me other than maybe a rogue mountain lion or something along those lines um you know i would love to run into a bigfoot i would love to see some of this stuff firsthand i am scared to death of this 500 yard long ditch line that has a weird little cave behind my store in the middle of town so there's this little wooded triangle um, it's not very big. You can see houses up above it, and it's it's just a hillside is all it is. There's nothing, like, too strange that goes on in the daytime. It's not like I'm out in the middle of nowhere, and there's this grove of, you know, witch hazel trees that have grown in a perfect circle, and I will walk in the middle of them. It's like there's a few oak trees and a few poplar trees and some briars and that's pretty much it. I have walked up on that hillside. I walked up on that hillside one day and had a full-on panic attack. Like, I almost had to crawl out of there. I didn't see anything. Nothing actually happened. Um, just the energy of that place is so dramatically negative. I mean, you guys will attest to it. Like, I'm, I'm scared. It's weird. That area. It, it's it's weird. It's uh it's a really bizarre place, and it was it everything lines up with this isn't some kind of transient energy that this is actually something that's there. Um, it's an inhabitant, man. Yeah, it it's something that's there, and and I'm not sure. I can't put a finger on exactly what it is, and and anybody who's listening knows that like I don't like really doing that anyway. Um, because you, you know, it's really easy to be wrong. And if you just use general <laughs> point in this area, you yeah. know, but, um, but we saw spatial anomalies. We did. We saw spatial anomalies that shouldn't, we, we were seeing things that weren't paranormal. I mean, First they are to some people, Joe, I guess, they, right? I mean, yeah, they a lot of paranormal researchers, they will consider this paranormal. But this wasn't paranormal. This was some kind of temporal anomaly. It's a quantum fluctuation, in it, my opinion. I want I want to take out our equipment. Oh yeah, and, for sure. And yeah. actually measure readings in that area, yeah. because it, the, yeah. like the stuff that we were experiencing, this wasn't like your haunting 
scenario. This was literally, if anywhere had a portal, mm-hmm. this is the place that the portal's at. Like, you know, you hear people say that Point Pleasant had a portal, and that's why the Mothman activity. And you hear people say that, uh, you know, Kelly, Kentucky had, uh, you know, a portal, and that's why they had the Goblin experiences. And all these different places had these weird um, temporal anomalies and or portals, if you will. Well, and, that storage room at, at the bottom that those people were in, I had three grown men and a grown woman run out of that storage room trying to push each other out of the way because there was a giant lizard crawling across the ceiling. Yeah, I mean, it's it's weird. This place, there's something weird going on, and I don't, I honestly do not think it is paranormal. It is abnormal. Well, there's the paranormal stuff, too, and that's another interesting thing that's happened. Um, SRI, on their video that they've done on the store, they have it on a uh, obelisk. So, obelisk is going, you know, I'm pretty sure that everybody that's listening to this is pretty familiar. Legion. With oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of the time it's just incoherent mumblings and it's words you can't really string together without a lot of speculation. Um, Teresa said, what are you, you know, what are you? And we got some kind of weird word. And then it said, Omnic. <laughs> Those things have a pre-programmed number of words in them. It's not like they can just magically make up a word that's not even in a dictionary. It's not yeah. even a Slavic dictionary. Um, it said Ovnik, and she said, is that what you're afraid of? Yes. And she said, why? I said, the eyes. So, all that weird stuff that happens inside of the store does not affect me whatsoever. But yeah, it's a totally different but thing. everybody yeah. that comes in there... You know, especially at night. At night, it's a a different world. I can go down there at 2 o'clock in the morning and sit there alone and listen to the radio and feed my tarantulas and, you know, do whatever I want. I'm not going to be touched. I'm not going to have anything bother me. I'm not going to have anything walk around me. The only thing that I'm going to see is whenever I walk out into that back room, I'll see the little black flash go across behind the couch, and I know that everything's okay because it's there. So, yep. digging into it further, um, the Ovnik supposedly, according to one or two really minor resources that published like an article or two in 2007, um, can eat evil spirits. That's uh-huh. like a whole thing. So, anything negative, supposedly, if it tries to mess with the caretaker of it, it'll just eat it. Well, it makes sense. I mean, yeah. we even said we thought that the Ovnik was more of a protector type thing. Yeah, so. it, it was definitely with you. Yeah. Like it, and it was... I've been it, trying it, for a year to get somebody to push me in that back room. <laughs> I just want to see what happens. Nope. <laughs> I'm not going to be taking that challenge. I don't think they want to see what happens, so... Nope. I, I want somebody that is adamantly against ever believing that it could possibly be real I mean I'll take my glasses off we can have a, a mock fist fight I don't care. I'll give you a baton go for the knees man I just want to see what happens to you, which sounds terrible but like you know it'd be nice to know like I I don't I have cameras and I do have a security system in the store um I have never ever been concerned with somebody stealing something from that back room I have never been concerned with somebody coming in and trying to hold the store up, which antique stores, you deal with a lot of cash. Mm-hmm. I'm on kind of the, the batter side of town. That's not a fear. It's just never been, you know? That's amazing. I mean, somebody comes in there and tries to do a hold up all of a sudden and freaking throat gets slit out of nowhere. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, but, you know, if any producers are listening, you you know, Sci-Fi Channel, uh, you know, you need some original material. Um, you, you probably need to talk to him because this this would be a great series. I mean, it's kind of like uh, Warehouse 13, uh, Friday the 13th. Um, 
you know, all, all those shows rolled into Twilight Zone, all rolled into one. I mean, you, you've got a great series. Yeah. I'd say it could go for at least seven seasons. <laughs> it's longer than Warehouse 13. That's right. Yeah, that's true. I would love Warehouse to be Firefly by five seasons. That would be yes, yes. It, it could happen, especially in that place. It's a magic place, man. It is a magic place. That's what we kept saying. It's like, there's, I've never been to a place that just had that weird vibe. And it wasn't a bad vibe. This is the thing, too. A lot of people, you know, we're telling you, oh, yeah, it's kind of negative. That's only out back. Inside the shop, you don't feel that. And again, I think that's because you're a little buddy. I think Inside you're of little... the shop, you're protected. Yep, that's exactly what I think. And, uh, you know, uh, just watching Joe have to come to realization that, that there was something there that he couldn't quite explain away was just oh, so satisfying i got joe to stutter yes you did <laughs> yeah yeah you did it, and it was fascinating just to watch his face and you you were just like oh yeah that, that happens all the time well Teresa, whenever they were in whenever they did that episode she was like i really want to see it and i was like okay it's in that box just walk over there and i mean she'll tell you it's it's all on video her explaining it like if you ask her she's just like yeah it's crazy she was like, I, I want to see it. I said, go look in the box. And so we walk over towards this box, and there's just two little green eyes and two little white pointy teeth peeking over the box. And she was like, yeah. yeah. Is that it? And I said, yeah, go. Go look at it. Yeah. <laughs> and and then it, you know, she got a little too close, and it got jumpy, and then it's gone. And she looks at me, and I said, why don't you take a picture? And she goes, I forgot I have a phone. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, that's what you're looking at because it's something that's so against your paradigm that you don't even think about it. Dude, I had a phone. Yeah, you could have Not taken once. a picture. It, it Not, will I show had up my on phone pictures. out because I was texting my wife. And then as soon as I saw the thing, I was like, holy crap. And I was like, I got something I got to tell you. Don't let me forget. No, yeah, I'm sure I, it would show up in pictures. I mean, all you guys have to do is, like, take a picture. It's fine. So, I'm a, I'm a big collector um, of kind of weird stuff. So, we're about, to, we're about to launch a podcast, and I'm working on building out my podcast studio. So, I really need an interesting piece. We might be making a trip. He has oh, it. He has it. He has we might it. be making a trip up there. Um, if you would have us uh, come in. We'd like to purchase a piece from you, perhaps, and maybe uh, come in and, and film a little bit, if that's okay with you. Yeah, absolutely. For, and for I, a don't have, I don't have a interesting piece. He has. I have all the interesting pieces. Yeah. Yes. It's, yeah. yeah it's like, amazing. last time Ron came in, I was like, hey, man, do you want to see this weird dagger? And it, what, what do you think that thing was? I don't, I don't know, know, what that know where is. it came from. I think it's okay. So the dagger, which is weird about it, um, one the bottom part, the handle, is actually a napped spear point, which goes into what looks to me uh, to be a metal spear point on top, like they've made this hybrid thing. I, I'd say it's a trade piece. That would be my guess that you've got a, a trade piece of some sort. Um, almost equivalent to like trench art, something like that, you know. Yeah, I have a Civil War era wedding ring I dug on the hillside behind the store, not in the ditch. Yeah, yeah, you not know. in the ditch. I would not you dig, dig in the, in the ditch. ditch. Be a bad idea. Yeah, I'm good, Just man. Unearthing stuff back there, I no, you don't want to do I, that. I'm, I don't want to let it loose. I don't want it any closer. Than you I know, I got to say, there's this, there's one story that you told us while we were there that really was fascinating, and that was the the hat. Um, that's when I knew we were in a very magical place. Uh, oh man, I've never, so there's maybe five people that know magical. about that. Magical. Yeah. Purely magical. I, I never publicly explained the hat because if you didn't think I was crazy before now, you would absolutely think I was crazy because of the hat. Um, that was a, that was an experience. Yeah, yeah, and uh, it's really cool. And if you know, if if you ever find yourself up that way, maybe he can tell it to you because it's a really long story. Um, yeah, it's a good story though. And but it's, my goodness, the, just um, the stuff in the store. Wow, 
the, just, the, the store itself is just yeah. fascinating. Do you like antiques? Do you like crystals? Do you like strange paranormal, uh, extra dimensional quantum reality breaking things? If you do, the deep end. Do you need a bayonet? Keeps, he's got it. <laughs> do you need? Do you need a, a almost finished sculpture? He's he's got he's those got too. He's trying to think of what interesting thing I have laying around me from the store. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Let's let let's let him see some interesting thing. Do you need a? There you go. This is it. Buddha made out of a water buffalo horn. Someone out there needs see? this. Someone uh, out there right needs there. this. It can be I don't yours. Know where this came from. Chime in right now. Let us know if you need that. Uh, and just a case in point, the the Woodstock poster. Hey, you know, you know that was that was amazing. Oh yeah. Are you talking about poster. the Jimi Hendrix poster? Yes. Yeah. Sorry, the Wood 67 yeah. Pandora Productions. It was actually from um it would have been right at the release of his second album before he was like anybody. Yeah. And we got to like touch it. Touch it. Yeah, yes. Arlo Guthrie's guitar. Got yeah, Arlo it. Guthrie's guitar. We got to play it. <laughs> yeah. Um I don't, I don't know, man. And then there's just other like stuff. There's arrowheads that I dug up. Which are pretty cool. They're fascinating too. Um, you know, your spider collection is is pretty awesome. Yeah, there's like six tarantulas in the store. We might um, want to put that in. I might just cut that out. We want alienate your customer base, like me, because that's back in the office. No, yeah, you can't get to that. That's in the that's in the office. Don't worry, you can't. Uh, if you go in the store, you won't get attacked by tarantulas. <laughs> yeah, they're all in cages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feather legs. Sometimes there's issues. Only once, actually. And the Ovnik doesn't open those doors. It does no. not. No. That's why they're double latched. But you you had some uh, early era Japanese stuff, um, like like swords. You had uh, like world or not world war, but Civil War era chef knives. Um, I mean, it's just. Sky's the limit, guys. If you can think about it, he probably has has it or oh, yeah. something like it. Guarantee it. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Uh, the mem the military memorabilia section is it's it's a, it's a museum. I mean, it's literally like going into a museum that you can that buy. you can buy the stuff in it. Fantastic. Yeah, and and then if you are there on a day that I'm there, um, I bought stuff for that store in 36 states and nine countries, so. You know, I'm getting ready to head back to Europe um, to buy more things, just odd things. If you're there on a day that I'm there, I'll give you a tour of my office, which is always a mess. But, you know, if you're nice, I'll let you dig through the boxes and you'll find all kinds of things that I probably don't even remember where they came from. Um, and then there's, you know, like, there's just weird stuff like the knife. Mm -hmm. The yeah. dud knife. Mm -hmm. Makes yep. women want to stab me or they hold it. Right. Um, yeah, it's it's just it's uh it's a very special place. It's so you're deep in, man. you're going to get a lot of probably uh you know you'll you'll get some people who actually watch this and and want to know, you know, if if they want to investigate, would you be open for that or you know always, how, always? see always. there you go guys you don't you don't find a place like that. Yeah, and it's free. Um, you you know if you message me, it's not going to be like. Oh yeah, it's five hundred for two hours, and uh, if you want to stay overnight, I'll buy you a five dollar pizza, and it'll be a thousand bucks. Um, I if I have time, I enjoy being there. I always have stuff that I can do while people are doing investigations. I don't really worry about anybody stealing stuff. Um, you know, that's like taking the black sand off the beach in Hawaii, right? So that's things that people just don't do in my store. Yeah, you don't want to do that. You, you really, really don't, don't want to do that. It's in your best interest to not. I promise. It's easier yeah. to buy it than it is to pay for it. Yeah, because um, we'll be out investigating what happened to you, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, probably. But, yeah, I mean, if you want to come down, you know, we can work out a date um, that I don't have anything going on. I don't mind if you want to come down and spend the whole night. As long as I don't have stuff going on, you know, early the next day, usually I'll just come down and hang out with you. I mean, if, if you want to sit around and play music, you're more than welcome to. It's just, you know, it, I try to make it a nice place for anybody. Everybody's welcome. So, you know, if, if you're one of the weirdo outcasts that doesn't have anywhere to go, just come down to the shop and hang out, man. We'll be your friend. 
that uh, that that is definitely a a true statement. Um, can't can't speak highly enough of you or the shop, Jesse. You got any uh, questions for for Travis over there? No, not really. Um, I I I would like to go and check out the shop eventually. So we might uh, set something up that we come up and check out the shop and maybe uh, pick up a piece for our uh, our podcast studio. I'd really like that because I'm a collector of of strange and unusual things. That's you'll be definitely the place for you. you Anybody you'll, who you'll be who there while. wants strange and unusual. Yeah, I plan to be there for four or five hours. It, easy, easy, for real. He's not. I, I've had people come in whenever I open. I open at 11. Um, if I'm there, you know, I'll stay until you want to leave. Like, I've had people stay until midnight that have came in at noon. Um, pretty easy to go along with, guys. I just kind of do my thing. But no, I mean, it's nothing for somebody to come in and spend six or seven hours and they just look at the same stuff over and over and then they see more stuff and then they look at it and they just keep going. Um, yep. You know, and some of the stuff I bring in there, I mean, I'm bringing stuff in every week and some of the weird paranormal stuff that goes on there, you have to think I'm buying estates, I'm buying individual pieces from rarities auctions, I'm buying you know, from basically anywhere that'll sell stuff. I've crawled through my belly on, you know, dirt floors and collapsed barns looking for stuff to dig out of the corners, like dig them with my hands. So you don't really know what's in there, which to me just kind of makes it cooler because like it's true. The paranormal stuff, you know, nothing in there is newer than 1970. But most of the stuff's going to be before 1940, and most of the people that owned it are dead. Um, yeah, it's, I've got brooches that were probably some little old lady's prized possession. If you think that objects can have things attached to them, I have objects that you want to look closer at. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. Absolutely agree. Well, final thoughts. Final Wrong. thoughts. The deep end is the most amazing place I've ever been. Uh, I am not uh, a paid affiliate, a sponsor, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I buy the stuff just like anyone else does. And But I can tell you this, that is the coolest antique store I think I've ever stepped foot in. Uh, you know, paranormal stuff aside, but, you know, the Avnik, big respect for the Avnik. Huge yeah, that was uh, the Ovnik thing. That that's just it's it's wild, and I can't say more good things about the store than what we already have. Um, highly recommend it. If you are within a 500 mile radius, drive down to Beckley, West Virginia, and check out the Deep End Antiques because it is you're not going to find better stuff, and the quality is fantastic. Um, Dude, weird... he could be charging thousands of dollars to go to this place. I'm not even kidding you. I mean, it's worth it. Like you said, 500 miles? Yeah, it's worth it. Do it. Take the trip. Yeah, yeah I mean, because I've like, like Ron, than that. Like yeah, Ron Travis sure. had, had just mentioned, too, something that our listeners might not be familiar with is that oftentimes paranormal locations or areas that are have alleged activity will often charge you to conduct your paranormal investigation. And that can go up into the thousands of dollars. The deep end? Go down there and buy some stuff. Stay They're as long friends. as you want. That's all I ask. Share a post on Facebook. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's like I said, man, I want it to be fun for everybody to come in there and look around. And, you know, if, if you're into investigating, even if you're just getting started investigating, you want a surefire place that you're going to get something that's going to keep you in it. Um, I, I'll tell you straight up, something's going to happen whenever you're in there. I don't know what it's going to be, Something. but it's going to be. It, it's, yeah, I can pretty well snap my fingers in that place and, and something will happen. Well, we are coming up against our time barrier here. Travis, tell everybody where they can find you. Uh, one more thing before I do that. Um, Go for I want it. to say thank you to you guys again for some awesome artwork that's hanging in my store. Um, those are absolutely two of my prized possessions now. 
you know, if anything ever happened to the store, I have like five things in there that I would lose my mind over, and two of them came from you guys. So well, wow. I, I greatly, greatly appreciate that. We're glad that they found a home in your shop where they can be on display for eons and eons to come for people to see the work. Uh, it, it's uh, It was awesome being able to give those to you and see them matted and framed and everything and put up. It's just cool. Really, really cool stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, I took them to the best framer that I could find. I didn't care how much it cost. I just wanted to be able to display them properly. Um, you know, it, it means a lot to me that I am in possession of those. So I really, really appreciate that. Very welcome. Thanks for being on the show. So tell uh, tell everybody where they can find you, man. Yeah, so uh, we're in Beckley, West Virginia, um, right at the intersection of Interstate 64 and Interstate 77. So if you're on either of those, you pretty well have to go past us at some point. Um, I'm like two miles off the interstate, maybe, you know, might be four minutes if you hit the red light. Um, we're on Facebook at Deep in Antiques, and you're more than welcome to message me personally. Um, I'm sure my name will be somewhere spelled here. <laughs> uh, you're probably not going to guess it. So, But, uh, yeah, I mean, just, you know, if you happen to be traveling on an odd schedule and you want to see the store and you're – going to be around outside of business hours if you get a hold of me um if you call the store during business hours or you message me or you know however you can find a way to let me know that you're going to be passing through i will be more than happy to stay open late or come down early i've had people that were passing through at 2 a.m and they let me know the day before and i happen to be in town and i will gladly come down unlock the door cut the lights on you know i've I've had people passing through. I've, I've brought them a cup of coffee whenever they came in. You know what I mean? It's just, we, we try to be as welcoming as we can. So don't think that the store hours should be a deterrent for you to stop in. Um, just let me know that you're going to be in the area. And if you want to be there and I'm available, uh, like I said, I do travel a lot. So my partner runs the store the majority of the time. But uh, I will gladly come down and meet you and open the store up. That is awesome. Well, man, thanks again for being on the show, giving us a little bit of a rundown of uh, some Slavic lore and the creatures that inhabit Eastern Europe and apparently your neck of the woods. <laughs> West Virginia. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's great having you on, man. Uh, Jesse, do you want to take us home? Take us home to West Virginia? Mountain Mama? No. All right. <laughs> okay. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Wild and Weird Radio. My name is Jesse. You can find me at hellbentholler.com on YouTube. Just look up Hellbent Holler. You can see all of my videos and all of my field investigations and all of my gear videos. They're awesome. Give it a, give it a subscribe. Give it a like and all that stuff. Um, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe Wild and Weird Radio, and turn on your notifications so you know when new episodes are coming out. If you use a podcast aggregator, make sure you also download the episode so we go higher in the ranking. Thank you again for listening. You can find me on Instagram at Jesse. You can find Joe at Skinwalker Sculpts. You can find Ron at Lanham Ron. And then, of course, please look it, look up our friend here at the Deep End Antiques of Blackley, West Virginia on Facebook. And uh, go check out the store. And then I think Joe and I are going to maybe make our way up there. Um, Joe's family is from Beckley uh, originally. So uh, we might go up there and check that out. And uh, wander my Joe is from around there. Uh, but we might go up there and check out your Obnick and maybe check out all your little creepy spots and uh, maybe do a little video up there if you're okay with it. Absolutely. Thank cool. you guys for having me on. Go ahead, Joe. You're dying to do it. <laughs> Get it over. Remember, like, share, and subscribe because there is an Obnick out there that is depending on you. And if it's unhappy, it might just burn your barn down. Or touchy funny. One of the two. Stay wild and weird, everybody. <laughs>